Hey everyone, it's Grand Stratagem here with the quick beginner's guide on the survival RPG known as Kinshi. Now, this is a very kind of diamond in the rough game that you may have noticed on Steam. It's been an open beta for the better part of a decade now, and you may have even seen one of your favorite Let's Players take a stab at this, but maybe you're watching this video now because you're a little intimidated about all the crazy information that's launched at you in the beginning of the game, and you're not quite sure how to get a handle or just, you know, some quick beginner tips so where you can still explore the game without having to go and, you know, read through a wiki for three or four hours. So I'm going to here to hopefully help you give you some quick beginner tips, so let's get started. So we're going to go ahead and start with the new game here, and you'll notice immediately you can choose different beginnings, and if you want, you can pause the video, read through each of these. They're all actually pretty interesting, but don't feel like you're going to be locked into a certain playstyle if you decide to pick one playstyle over the other. Yes, some of these are easier, but I would generally start off with the Wanderer start. This is the typical standard start. You only have to control one character, and that's really good to help you kind of understand the basics and also your limitations in this game. So let's go ahead and start. But if you notice there's advanced options, these just more or less change different multipliers that you'll become familiar with over play. You leave this for default for now. So we're going to go ahead and begin. Um, this game is essentially the setting is in a post-apocalyptic kind of wasteland that you know there's a scarcity and it really gives you this nice sense of like desire for exploration because this is not a triple a game this is a game that there are still new things being discovered about it in the game world each day and, I mean, if you really want to spoil yourself on the wiki, you can, and there is a link below, and it is helpful for people who want to become, uh, you know, get really into, like, the base building and all that kind of nice stuff. But um, I leave it to you to play how you want. So this is a great character customization screen. I could spend hours here if I wanted to. I highly recommend picking up some of the mods in the workshop because they offer a ton of new options from the default base game. And there is a great amount of functionality. So you don't have to worry too much about having to implement all these mods and it doesn't get too crazy. So one thing I will touch on before we start is the actual races themselves. Now, if you notice in the bottom left, there are different racial stats with different modifiers. Don't be too intimidated by this. Uh, the, the only stat that really particularly matters is the base hit points. Um, but just picking the regular human, like with uh, the Greenlander, with 100, you'll be fine. Um, you just get bonuses to these skills here, which means they will just train faster. If you notice, say, like with the Scorchlander, you'll get multiple stats that uh, train faster, whereas some you do take a penalty. So it just kind of depends on what you want to specialize your character in. Um, I will add one additional note that there is a race here called the Skeleton, and these, this is a robotic race, so they will not be able to heal injuries in the same way that an organic race would. They, uh, I mean, if you want to play this, you can, but I just am, want to caution you in saying that they're, essentially their medic or first aid kits are extremely expensive and difficult to come by. So yes, they are stronger with a base hit points of 200, and they do have some very unique uh, skill traits that will level up faster, but um, they can be very quickly a liability. But so we're going to go ahead and start with just your basic human Greenlander here. And we don't really care too much about what he looks like, but here we go. We're Nikon and the border zone. So let's we just go ahead and hit map here, or sorry, M for map. And you'll notice we are in the hub. Uh, this is in about the middle uh, region of the map. And many of these different starts will start you in different areas of the map. Um, there really is no direction in this game. You can decide to do whatever you want. There are missions, there are quests, uh, there are reasons to go and explore different towns. I've been to Squin before, this is where some of the Shek actually live. Um, but this is really a game about discovery, so, you know, your character has its basic needs, as we'll see in the bottom left here. I'm slowly losing hunger points, and we also have our status points here. So let's talk a little bit about that real quickly. Um, my blood status at 75, uh, different races have different bleed multipliers, so some will bleed out much quicker than others. Um, but let's talk very quickly about what these different limb stats mean. If you're familiar with maybe Dwarf Fortress or a game in, in that similar vein, I think maybe like RimWorld, uh, it works in a very similar light. So if 
our head stat goes into the negative, our character will start to become unconscious and start to bleed out, most likely, if it's a cut wound. Uh, if our left arm is just completely mangled, we may actually end up losing it completely and having to find a replacement prosthetic in the game. Uh, the same goes for your legs. If your leg goes crippled, uh, your character will start hobbling around, and if you're trying to run away from something, uh, good luck. <laughs> Um, but let's look at our actual base stats, and you'll notice very quickly we have one strength, one toughness, one dexterity, zero perception, and one in everything. Now, just to give you some perspective, the max is, I think, 99, so we are actually pathetic. Um, I'm talking like if we walk outside this town and encounter one group of little small bandits, uh, we're not going to be alive for very much longer. So, what is a newbie player to do? Well... There are two ways to make money in this game, which is really should be your primary objective, is trying to make sure you're not starving to death. So we need to acquire money, which in this game is cats. So if you bring up our inventory, um, this is what we start off with, which is not much at all. But in our bottom right here, we have our money. It's the C for cats, 1,000 cats. That's a pretty decent start. Um, and I will say here, there's two ways you can go about it. The first way is you can be a nice, loyal, laboring peasant of society. Uh, if we wanted to, the easiest way to make money in the very beginning is to actually start searching around our opening town and looking for some sort of resource. If over here, actually, we see an iron node, and we could run over here very quickly. Let's go ahead and speed us up, and here comes Nikon our nice little laboring peasant, and we can just right click on this ore, and he will begin laboring on this ore node. Now, as he does that, uh, he will slowly start to produce uh, an ore, and that will take time, he will become exhausted, but over time, uh, we'll eventually see an ore node pop up in his inventory, and his laboring stat will increase. In fact, it's increasing right now. And with the higher labor stat, that makes him more efficient in the ore management, etc., etc. And with each ore, we can just immediately sell that into town, and eventually we can buy food with that. Now, that is the slow, laborious way of, oh, and there's even bandits after me, so it's also extremely dangerous, so let's run back into town before we get murdered. Uh, there's a whole little army after us. I hope there are guards that can stop that, but if not, let's just run to the bar. Uh, we'll be safe there, right? Haha, <laughs> yeah, so this game is actually very dangerous. We're just gonna go ahead and close that door. And, oh, someone wants to drink with us. Oh, well, there's, uh, there's a lot of bandits on the door. Um, okay, they, oh shit, okay. All right, so we've got a bar, bar fight going on here, and they're after me. This is a, okay, uh, they're all fighting each other. Let's try and run out very quickly, and maybe we can survive. Yeah, so this game is uh, a, a little difficult for people early on, um, but let's talk about that second way of making money, and that is actually to steal things. Now, right now, I'm running for my life. Uh, that's good because I'm training my athletic stat right now. And trust me, you are going to become probably the fastest man alive in this game, especially early on because there is no way I can take on 20 different bandits who probably have 20 melee skill when I only have one. So we're going to keep running for our lives here and we'll even speed it up a little bit because uh, there's not much we can really do except run away and maybe we can lose these guys and double back into the town and they are very persistent but i'm sure the people in the bar have probably wiped the floor with those bandits by now so we can probably get back in here and show the actual stealing set in fact look we have some of our bandits here right now we can loot their corpse hey i just got a new armor piece welcome to the world of kenshi oh yes uh the people here have been utterly uh massacred um thank goodness for bar guards i guess so yeah, their corpses are littering the floor, and if you notice, there is no red indicator when I hover over them. So, um, we can freely loot their items, and that's what they get for attacking an innocent newbie. Now, let's say uh, I want to steal things. What's the point of stealing things? Well, let's go ahead and do our sneak option here. And if you'll notice, there, the line of sight uh, and stealth in this game is actually pretty robust. Characters have to have a direct line of sight on you and right now I'm obviously in their detection. 
but let's go ahead and just hit Alt and right click. And if you notice, we'll see that there are items and you'll find items in almost every single shop. You can see them out on the counter and they are all worth money. Now we could have mined out a piece of iron ore in a single day, which would may have given us a hundred cats or so, or we could just steal these steel bars here and that would be 600 cats immediately. And we could steal all of this actually. And it would be very, very profitable very, very quickly. Now, the only problem is if you are caught stealing, which I believe we had a 30% chance of being detected, uh, we would be immediately beat up by these nice guards that just massacred an entire bandit gang. So probably not a good idea to immediately start your uh, criminal career right now, especially when they're all awake and looking directly at you. That doesn't mean stealing is impossible in this game, but you do have to be smart about it. So once you actually steal an item, you have the option to fence it. And if you fence it to an opposing faction, you have a very high success rate. But if you're trying to sell the shop owner exactly what you just took from him, this game is a bit savvy about that. And you will most likely be caught. So with that in mind, you can become extremely rich. And I highly recommend save scumming. But if you're someone who's not into save scumming, uh, you are going to have to do the laborious route, I'm afraid. And I think that's part of the fun of Kenshi. So, what to do after you've attained money? So, really, you can do whatever you want. If you want to train skills, I highly recommend maybe sticking around towns. As you've just noticed, a giant bandit gang came after me, but I could have actually participated in the fighting, and maybe got some skill up points. Uh, you can actually go get enslaved if you want. I know, it sounds a little ridiculous, but it actually is a very easy and secure way to bolster your laboring stat. For instance, if I went to a certain city that was hell-bent on using slaves to do all their uh, labor, uh, if I was knocked out there and enslaved, uh, I would be forced into a routine of obedience and just do nothing but spend all my days slaving away until I finally decide to free myself. Now, some people may find that a little boring or egregious or etc. But say you're someone who's more interested in the base building aspect of this game, and that's another really interesting aspect. So if you decide to do base building, I highly recommend that you start hiring followers. So yes, this is a squad RPG survival game. You can very easily play it solo like I am, but it is extremely dangerous. Now, when you hire new recruits, remember, you need additional money. Usually it's 6,000 for average recruits, 9,000 for recruits with special skills. In fact, I believe we can talk to someone in here. Oh, no, get out of my face. Okay, um, how about Bard Dr Thug Drunk? Uh, okay, uh, actually, he's uh, not maybe someone we want to hire. What about you? Okay, so Kiji, Hoi ain't seen you around before, you recruiting, depends what your price, 6,000 cats. So we don't have 6,000 cats, but this is your easiest way to find new recruits, is to go into nearby towns and check out the bars. The NPCs do rotate over time, so it is a little bit like Mount Blade, if you're familiar with that game. Uh, so it does uh, pay to go and explore and travel. Um, so another way to make money is actually to trade. Um, if you can brave the waste, uh, you can go to a bar and once you've made a certain amount of money or you can go to a general store, uh, you can buy luxury goods or rather uh, valued goods. So let's go ahead and give you an example of what that looks like real quickly. So we'll go ahead and talk to the barkeep. He should have some goods here. Uh, for instance, let's see, he should have, yes. So like building materials is a valued good or steel bars is a valued good. And you will you can see the average price here. So the price markup here is 120%. That means it's on average a 20% higher in cost. So we definitely don't wanna buy the goods here, uh, but it would be good to sell steel bars here for a profit. So that's another way you can make money. And then once you've invested into some of the higher priced valued goods, you can actually make a pretty nice profit doing that. But again, remember, you have to make long treks and that can be extremely dangerous. So be sure to hire some mercs to support you in your uh, trade endeavors. With that in mind, uh, say you have a motley crew with you and you want to start off with your base building, I highly recommend uh, just getting a bunch of building materials. That was actually the thing we just looked at in that uh, base. And you're going to want to find a spot to prospect. 
So that's something that if we look down in the bottom right, we have our prospect button and we will get a very vague and kind of blurry object here. If our science skill was much higher, this would be much more defined and easier for us to essentially understand. And don't worry, you can, you can hire people who have high science skills and they'll usually let you know that. Um, but you wanna find areas that generally have high water and high fertility. Now, that's kind of the beauty of Kinchi is finding a nice location. And keep in mind, there are areas that are owned by certain factions and will have extremely dangerous monsters inhabiting them and roaming bands of critters will end up at your front gates and you're going to have to defend yourself. So really, Kenshi is a game of what you want to make of it, essentially. If you want to be a solo sword wielding uh, wanderer type or ronin type you can totally be that if you want to try to build a sprawling empire that competes with the different factions in this game that there is an actual integrated diplomacy system as we can see here under the faction uh, this is only five factions here but there are many more maybe dozens more to be discovered um, you can do that as well you can have a political weight in this world if you don't like a particular faction uh, you can hire up to 50 recruits and train your own little army and start leading raids into their territory and steal all their stuff for resources. I mean, it's it's a very, very robust game, and there's a lot of potential for you and your new game of Kenshi. This is Grand Strategy, and I hope this guide was helpful. See you next time.